Welcome back to All on Unlock. Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the, the hemodynamic parameters of shock. This is really very important for USMLE examination. USMLE examination. So, I'm going to talk about this uh, shock. Uh, before starting a discussion on this, I would request you to subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos with your friends. Okay guys, so let me quickly start this and I'm talking about only important points for USML examination or any other medical board examinations. So let me start with the types, types of shocks. First, I'm going to start, start with the cardiogenic shock. The cardiogenic shock, okay. The cardiogenic shock as you know, cardiogenic. We have different types of shock that is a cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, septic shock and neurogenic shock. And in USML examination, you need to diagnose the disease based on cardiac output, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, systemic venous oxygen saturation and systemic vascular resistance. They give the value and you have to diagnose which type of shock it is. Okay guys, let's start with the cardiogenic shock first. As you know, look at the history in the USML examination. Is there any history of myocardial infarction, chest pain, or congestive heart failure, okay? Or any risk factor for coronary artery diseases, right? Look at the age of the patient, whether it's old, okay? Look at the, uh, is there any history of uh, what they gave, uh, what you call an examination, if they gave the JVD, okay? Or pulmonary congestions on x-ray. So these are the things, try to think of the cardiogenic shock. But now, we have to diagnose based on cardiac output and some other parameters I'm going to talk about. Let's talk about the cardiac output, then pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, then systemic venous, systemic vascular resistance, and systemic venous oxygen, oxygen saturation. Okay? Right. Now cardiac output, in a case of a cardiogenic shock, what will be the cardiac output tell me? Yes, it's low, right? It's low. Whereas in a, uh, what you call, a, what will be the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure? It's going to be high, yes. Remember, it's going to be high because of the back pressure, right? Yes. The What will be the resistance? That is the systemic venous vascular resistance. Systemic vascular resistance will be high, right? Because of back pressure, right? Simple. So there's no logic in that, right? But what's the uh, systemic venous oxygen saturation? Definitely, it's going to be low, right? Good, excellent. Now, let, gonna, let me talk about what you call, uh, if it's a hypovolemic shock, remember, hypovolemic. If it's a hypovolemic shock, what will be the parameters? What will be the level of, uh, what you call, um, cardiac output? Hypovolemic shock, name itself indicates it's going to be low. Cardiac output will be low, right? Uh, the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is also low. Remember, it's also low because of the loss of the blood. They might give the history of any trauma or any surgery. Look for a high BP, okay? Look for the pulse rate, okay? And based on this history, this history and try to coins uh, what you call correlate with the parameters. What will be the systemic vascular resistance? It will increase. Why? Because of the body doesn't want to waste the blood, right? So the resistance increases. What will be the uh, what you call systemic venous uh, vascular uh, ox oxygen saturation? Sorry, systemic venous oxygen saturation. It will be low. So this is the point which differentiate whether it's a uh, shock due to what you call a cardiogenic or hypovolemic. Everything, the other thing is same what we see in both cardiogenic and hypovolemic. Okay, now, now let's move on to the next type of shock that is a septic, septic shock or neurogenic. Okay, so let's talk about the cardiac output, the PCW, PCW, VP, PCW, VP. Okay, then we have SVR, then we have SVO2, right? So now let's talk about the septic. I'm septic. Uh, I'm gonna talk about it's, it's, it's gonna be early part of the septic shock. Okay, for a septic shock, you should remember any history of what you call trauma, bleeding, 
or flush skin okay uh, sorry uh, i'm talking about this uh, septic shock right yep uh, there look for any infection any kind of uh, diseases running in his uh, uh, body like aids like immunosuppressive conditions try to remember or any kind of uh, broad spectrum anti antibiotics he's using look for these conditions in a patient with a uh, septic shock okay for ESML examination okay for in a septic shock the cardiac output will be high yes what will be the PCWT will be low remember it will be low okay the resistance will be low and whereas the SPO2 will be high it's a simple logic right so what kind of parameters you see in a neurogenic what you call a uh, shock in neurogenic shock try to look for a history of any central nervous system trauma or a bleeding or a flushed skin remember okay if you find these things try to look for the parameters the cardiac output will be low okay the PC WVP WP is low the SVR will be low and whereas what you call the venous oxygen saturation will also be low okay guys so these are the basic concepts about the hemodynamic parameters of the shock. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you like this video and please do subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos with your friends. Thank you so much.